You look forward to, to getting out on Sunday and, and seeing what this defense with all the changes and uh, that's been made and how they perform on Sunday? Yeah, I'm excited. I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to it. Counting down the hours, counting down the days right now. Um, I'm excited for the guys. I know, I mean, they, they work hard throughout the off season, all training camp. I mean, we push them. Um, I'm excited to go out there and see them cut it loose and play, and hopefully things we emphasize show up, and I'm looking forward to it. Elijah earned the starting slot role? Yeah, I mean, we'll see how it goes, I think, between him and Chris. Um, we'll see how it plays out as the game goes, but, uh, I mean, he's done a good job. He's done a lot of good things, so he'll be out there. So A lot of coaches talk about a team learning how to win, almost like there's some sort of indefinable quality that serves you in late-game situations. Do you think you guys have that, and, and, and what – sort of makes that quality. Yeah, I think um, I think it comes down to culture, the mindset, being to being able to be at your best in the toughest situations, being able to respond to adversity. I mean, every game's close in this league, as you guys know, regardless of who's playing who. Um, and I think being able to play with that kind of composure, have the confidence from winning those types of games before, I think that carries through. Um, hopefully it continues this season. Your DBs have talked about stepping up and challenging guys. Is there a difference when the game is happening and it's third and four to stepping up and challenging those guys as opposed to being off, which has been a habit here? For yeah, no, I mean, that's been our, our uh, something we've been focusing on all offseason. I don't think that changes, I think, based on the call, based on some things that you guys are seeing or we're seeing, um, it can affect that. But at the same time, like, we're going to be aggressive. We're going to challenge. Like that's been our mindset. That's what we've been working on. That's what we've been preaching. Um, so that it, that's just not going to go by the wayside. Haven't seen it now on the field. Some. How do Bud and Harold complement each other? Yeah, I mean, I think they're two different skill sets. Bud's a big, strong, athletic dude, explosive. Harold's more probably quicker, a little bit more bendy, right? So different skill sets. Um, I do think they complement each other well, just based on what kind of Harold does versus Bud. Like Bud's got the ability to power through guys and brings all that element um, to his game. I mean, it's been fun seeing them out here together working, um, getting Nico out there, getting Jeff out there, getting Roby out there, getting uh, Ola out there. Like having those guys out there, man, it's been good to see. Uh, we talked to some of the guys yesterday, some of the defensive guys, and they had mentioned we just we want to come out and, and be a different defense, obviously, this year. What to you stood out in the preseason, maybe in training camp, that you saw that actually come into fruition a little bit? Yeah, I think, uh, I think the energy. I think they were competing play in and play out. Um, kind of back to what Paul said, I think they were challenging. Um, again, it, like I tell them all the time, they get paid too. Like they're going to make their plays. They get paid too, but we got to make them earn it. Like we can't just give them anything. We got to make them earn it. If you get beat, we got to freaking forget about it. And we got to play the next play, right? Um, and I think that goes back to confidence, understanding kind of what the game is, how it's played, play in and play out. Um, but I'm hoping to see just the energy, the the passion for playing defense, having fun, and at the same time, understanding the situations and the emphasis that we've kind of harped on all offseason. <laughs> in get, getting Bud kind of ready to play, and, and based on what you've seen from him, you feel like he's ready to kind of hit the ground running? Yeah, I mean, he's been out here in terms of mental reps throughout camp. He's been doing different things. He's been able to get mixed in on different tempos from all the way since we started camp. He's been doing different things. So I think mentally he's there. Um, I think physically he's he's been able to do stuff these past couple weeks. So, I mean, I'm excited. You look out there and see him in practice, you wouldn't know he was coming off an ACL, right? So I'm excited to see see him go on Sunday. What went into getting Danico to work with some of the, uh, the outside linebackers uh, doing individual here? Yeah, I think just the versatility of him. Like, he can play a lot of different spots for us, whether it's inside, whether it's outside, depending on the situation. Um, like, you got to get him prepared to do that, right? So we got to be able to – put them in those situations and individual work those techniques and individual. We can't just ask him to do something without him working on it. And then in the reverse, you got Weaver sometimes bumping inside like three tech. It's very similar. I would say the weave stuff is probably a little more pass rush oriented, right? Um, so it's a little bit different in that regard, but it, it is the same thought process is you got to be able to work the technique and fundamentals. It's a lot different being on the edge rushing versus being inside and rushing. It's night and day, the skill set it takes, the guys you're going against from a tackle to a guard to a center, like 
totally different mindset. So I think being able to work those things, work those techniques, and being able to almost transition their mind to, hey, I got to do this now that I'm outside. I got to be able to do this now that I'm inside. What's the process like in trying to find the right rotation for guys that, you know, to rush the quarterback from outside? And you, know, you want your best guys to be out there, but you don't, don't want to overwork them. Uh, and you feel like you're in a better place with your personnel to do that this year? Yeah, I, th I think uh, now that we're into the season, it becomes a little more game plan based, based on who we have and their skill sets, based on who they have and their skill sets, trying to find matchups always. Um, but again, you never want to take away from what a guy does well, right? Like you want to put him in position where he's going to be most successful. Right, And there's going to be times they're going to be asked to do different things just within the scheme of the defense. But you don't want to overdo it to the point where you're putting a guy in a position where he's probably not, you're not going to get as much value from him there as you would somewhere else just to say you're being versatile. Right? Like with the quarterback group you have this year, you may be in a position to, to go into a game and say, well, this guy you know, best suits this receiver, and so we're going to play him on the outside of the slot versus in years past where it may have been, well, this is our left guy and this is our right guy. Yeah, I think uh, based on how this thing's kind of played out with the nickel situation and the corner situation, we got some versatility there. We got some different skill sets, some guys that can do both. Um, so by game plan, how we match up, or whether we don't match up, I think there is some versatility to change these guys around um, and align them in different positions, whether it's first, second down, whether it's third down, to get us in the best position to play the pass, obviously, on third down. Picking up, what Jim, of, picking up on what Jim said, uh, you had said during camp at some point, third outside linebacker comes in, you can't have any kind of drop off. You feel like you're equipped to do that now? Yeah, I do. I feel like, I feel like we're getting there. I do. I feel like we got guys that can go in the game and us not, not miss a beat. Guys that we can count on, I think the consistency of those backups has improved across the board. And that's the one thing you always, with the backups, their 15, their 20 snaps that they get, like you don't want to see a drop off, but more importantly, you want to see guys that are going to go in there and do it the way they're coached, the way they're supposed to within the scheme, right? That's a challenge of prepping for a QB like Murray. It's tough, man. I mean, he's a dynamic player. Um, he can make all the throws. He got a strong arm. And then obviously the the athleticism, the elusiveness. Um, I mean, it's a challenge. Like, we're going to have to be on our game. It's going to take everybody, every snap. Like, it's not just one guy. Um, we got to be detailed in what we're doing. We got to be coordinated in the run game, in the pass rush. Like, there's a lot of things that go into it. And I think Ultimately, every guy better understand who he is on every single play and what he can do to us on every single play if we're not coordinated. Yeah. Mentioned, Consider uh, maybe Kent. putting a spy on him? Uh, based on game plan, how this thing goes, potentially. I mean, we'll see where it goes, but um, potentially. I mean, we've done that in the past with some other quarterbacks, right? So, I mean, you always have the option to do it. Um, so we'll kind of see. Process work, you know that pass rushing process. There communication. Like, how, how do you kind of like layer it where you know, like one guy's deep, one's here, and push like. To, to kind yeah. Of so based on different things that we see on film, um, ultimately that we have a plan going in, right? To how we're kind of going to handle that, whether we're running games, whether we're straight rushing and trying to balance and stay stay coordinated in that regard, we kind of have a plan going in with that. Um, T does a great job coaching those guys up on making sure they're playing off of each other. I think that's important, like on inside and outside. Like you got to be able to see color and play off them. We can't have two guys in the same same space. Like, okay, if, if you know, I'm just going to naturally make a move here, and you got to clean up this way, like that natural play. There, play there's play. absolutely stuff that comes into that. And I think knowing knowing who that guy is that has the freedom versus knowing who the guy is who doesn't have the freedom based on the play, right? You guys uh, played your starters, most of your starters, you know, a fair bit in each of the preseason games. I know a lot of teams don't even do that. I guess what, what was the reason for that, and, and do you think that will help you going into the, to the regular season? Maybe? Yeah, I, I think uh, just getting these guys playing, right? Like, you're playing defense. you got to be able to tackle. we got to be able to get lined up. I think the communication aspect of it was huge for us, doing it under the lights. we got a bunch of new faces, guys playing together for the first time. Um, so I think that played a part in getting them out there, getting them communicating and doing those types of things. Um, 
but hopefully it, it pays off where it's not their first time live bullets on Sunday. They got some comfort level going into the game. Hey, we've done this already a few times. Like, it's, it's time to go. Tyler, Jeff used the term yesterday, uh, don't try to kill, cat or capture, not kill. Is that essentially, we suck. <laughs> is that essentially keep them hemmed in, don't, don't? Exactly. You know. it's, it, it's the old saying, like, if you're going to go shoot your bullet, like, think of it as being a hunter, right? And you're trying to shoot a freaking rabbit that's bouncing around. If we go fire in, like, there's a chance we're going to miss, right? Like, so being able to kind of corral and control the guy without shooting, our, there's a time and place for you to take your shots. But at the same time, there's a time and place to make sure we stay on our feet and kind of try to slow him down a little bit where it's not make you miss and go 70. Feeling like, you know, for DC playing, you know, for this week one for the whole off season, uh, a lot of it's based on what you've seen from them in the past. Some uncertainty about what they could do, what they could throw at you. The yeah, I think always week one, man, like you never know. You really never know. Um, I mean, they've added some pieces, obviously, um, in the draft and in free agency. So that's always you never really know how that's going to play in terms of their game plan, everything else. So I think the biggest thing for us is we got to be able to get lined up and we got to be be sound. Like we got to know what we're doing in every call, no matter what they give us. Like that's that's defense, right? Offense. Granted, they see some crazy stuff on third down at times, right? But for the most part, like offense, they have their rules too. But defensively, like you got to prepare for everything. Like you, you don't know, right? So I think being sound within your rules on every single defense is critical. No matter what they come out, we should be able to get lined up. We should be able to play.